Okay, last class we were looking at uh, two, two things, metal transfer characteristics of a consumer welding process okay? and then we moved on to the another variant of consumer welding process which is cylinder metal arc welding. SMAW. So, the metal transfer is very important because that determines the stability of the process and the productivity and the aesthetic and mechanical properties in so on and so forth. Okay, so, we looked at uh, the metal transfer characteristic as a function of varying current, right. So, at low current it is starting from globular, if you increase the current and then globular becomes rippled globular and then uh, there is a spray transition in which uh, the globular and rippled globular becomes a spray transfer. Okay, so, the spray transition current is extremely critical to get the stable uh, metal transfer characteristics within uh, uh, acceptable uh, productivity. Right? So, from the spray transition if you keep on increasing the current, the, the, the drop spray becomes uh, an, a jetting spray right? and then continuously if you increase the current and jetting spray it becomes uh, rotating uh, jetting and subsequently an explosive transfer. So, in, in JMAW the transfer characteristic is very important. So, we always aim at uh, getting an, a, a drop spray transfer and that is what we looked at it right and we also looked at the video. So, which is the most ideal uh, transfer we always get and this happens just above the spray transition current. So, where the, 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 the drop diameter would be similar uh, to the filler diameter and individual droplet uh, with the filler diameter would transfer to the whirlpool and uh, this drop spray can easily be achieved by pulsing, current pulsing. So, we will see the effect of pulsing in detail in this class right and then uh, if uh, the current is increased further then it becomes uh, no, no, no jetting spray and uh, uh, jetting spray in some extent can be used for some applications where you need to have a, 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 a higher melting rate of uh, the consumables. For example, in spraying and cladding, cladding applications uh, you can use a jetting spray and uh, further increasing current lead to an instable jetting uh, leading to rotation of the droplets spray. And yeah, for some uh, cladding applications we can still use a uh, uh, jetting or a rotating jetting uh, spray. Right, but for the ideal GMAW case, the drop spray, the spray just above spray transition is very widely used. Right, it's clear. And then we move on to the the other uh, variant of the uh, the consumer welding process, which is SMAW. Okay, it's also known as MMAW, the shield metal arc welding or manual metal arc welding, or even a stick welding. So very the welding electrode, the consumable welding electrode, it is discontinuous and it has a uh, metal core and with flux coating, right. And most of the cases uh, uh, this SMAW process is self shielding process, okay. So, we do not use an external shielding glass, shielding gas. So, most of the cases uh, the process is self shielding, right. And why it is called self shielding? The self shielding because the shielding gas is generated by the decomposition of the flux, right. So, generally the flux contains the elements they either dissociate or decompose to generate the gases. So, one of the examples I, I showed you in last class the flux contain calcium carbonate based fluxes. So, these carbonate uh, uh, the calcium carbonate uh, when you heat it up it burns and decomposes into calcium oxide plus carbon dioxide and this carbon dioxide generates the required shielding and arcing gas required for striking an arc and protecting the well pole. Okay? So, if the flux the composition is majority is made of uh, calcium carbonate and uh, these kind of fluxes are known as basic fluxes basically because of the basicity, right. So, it is the same you use it in a steel making process. So, basic slags and acidic slags, okay. So, if uh, the flux contains a primarily calcium carbonate based uh, the composition and this is basic slag, right. And you can also have uh, the, uh, the flux made out of rutile and 
some cellulosic material. What is cellulosic material? It is made of wood, wood and wood particle. So, the natural uh, fibers. And this cellulosic material can also be added either to basic flag, basic basic uh, flux or to tile based fluxes. And most commonly cellulosic materials are added with uh, uh, rutile fluxes, titanium oxide fluxes, because when the cellulosic material burns, what would generate? Carbon dioxide again, right? Carbon dioxide. So, you will also get carbon monoxide and then carbon dioxide when the cellulosic material burn, right? So, that provides enough uh, carbon dioxide and carbon monoxide gases required for arcing as well as shielding. Okay. In most of the cases, so when you are welding uh, 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 steels with our thicker sections, so we need to make sure that hydrogen is not diffused to the well pool, right. So, for example, if you are using a low carbon steel for structural applications to build a bridge, the thickness would be 25 mm thick. In that case, you need to make sure that uh, the hydrogen is not diffused to the pole and whatever moisture is there in the condensed in the system uh, should not lead to diffusion of hydrogen by disintegration of water H2O into hydrogen, right. So, for welding uh, thicker sections 25 mm thick um, uh, plates or even higher, so we prefer uh, using uh, basic electrodes which is calcium carbonate because when you use calcium carbonate, we make sure that the shielding gas is only carbon dioxide, right. So, the, the basic flux coated electrodes most commonly used for low hydrogen environment. That means that when you do not want the hydrogen to diffuse and you want to uh, you know, avoid the, the moisture condensation and then the effect of mass moisture disintegration. So, we need to make sure that the sealing gas is only carbon dioxide, right. So, on, in contrary to the basic fluxes, if you use rutile based fluxes for example, titanium oxide, titanium oxide is known to disintegrate water. So, for photocatalytic applications, what is photocatalytic applications? For generation of hydrogen from water, okay. So, in, in the, uh, those applications, titanium oxide is very commonly used as a catalyst. So, photocatalytic applications. So, if you use a rutile based fluxes, okay, you can also disintegrate the moisture by titanium oxide because that is in a, in a catalyst, very effective catalyst, and then you can also generate hydrogen, isn't it? So, because if your hot water is disintegrated by titanium oxide. And then you also have cellulosic material to generate carbon dioxide. So, by binding titanium uh, oxide with the cellulosic material, you can generate the mixture of carbon dioxide and hydrogen, right. So, for welding uh, thinner sections, for welding arsenic stainless steels, or for welding uh, super alloys, or for, weld, for, for uh, uh, cladding uh, of uh, hot facing stellite, cobalt chrome super alloys. So, the rutile based electrodes are all commonly used, okay. So, these rutile based electrodes, they bring the versatility because you do not need to bake the electrodes, is not it? Even moisture is there, titanium oxide would take care of the moisture by disintegrating the moisture into hydrogen and hydrogen can be used for shielding. Hydrogen gas can be used for shielding. Suppose if you want to have an art facing or welding of stainless steels or where the, the hydrogen cold cracking is not that severe, okay. The other advantage of titanium oxide is we already seen the role of titanium oxide uh, in and cost to cost variation activated fluxes is known to change the surface tension of the material. So, the Doppler transfer can be enhanced, the behavior can be enhanced by adding titanium oxide because it can reduce the surface tension for example. So, then the droplet transfer can be promoted and also titanium oxide is act as a very active flux for the well material. So, the well pool dynamics can also be improved significantly. And the other one of the major advantage of using a titanium oxide is ionization. 
because uh, when we looked at an uh, GTAW electrode, tungsten electrode, they are all thoriated or the oxides doped. Okay, why? Because the ionization potential is much lower for oxides. So, when you have titanium oxide in the system, so obviously you also promote ionization, is not it? So, the arc stability increases tremendously if a flux contains titanium oxide. So, these are the, the advantages of using uh, the rotile based electrodes than the, uh, the, uh, the basic uh, flux coated electrodes. So, you can have a very good arc stability because of the, the, uh, the promoted ionization by the titanium oxide and you can also enhance the Doppler transfer frequencies because the titanium oxide also affects the surface tension of the droplets. So, you can also uh, increase the droplet transfer frequencies and titanium oxide also disintegrates moisture in the system into hydrogen. So, you also have extra shielding from the hydrogen gas. Okay? So, you can also now use the electrode without baking. So, generally the cellulosic and titanium rutile based electrodes, you do not bake it because when you are baking it itself, you need know, it start it and disintegrating sometimes if you are baking at say 200 degree centigrade. So, cellulose and rutile containing electrodes. So, it may also dis dis disintegrate during baking. Okay? Whereas, in the, the basic flux coat electrodes, calcium carbonate containing electrodes, you need to bake because there is no way otherwise you can fix the hydrogen. Okay? So, once you have the, the high humidity condensed electrode, basic electrode and you need to bake and release the hydrogen and then you can use the electrode immediately for welding applications. Whereas, uh, if you have rutile based electrodes or cellulosic material, you can straight away you start using it okay? with, with the, the, the enhanced, the basic baking is not necessary because uh, the hydrogen anyway it is going to disintegrate from the, I mean water is going to disintegrate into hydrogen and hydrogen can be used for shielding, mixture of CO2 and hydrogen. Right? So, what are the major three types of electrode fluxes we use? Rutile based. Okay, cellulosic material and cellulosic we also have some amount of titanium oxide as well. Okay. So, the majority component determines the type okay, titanium oxide plus CSEO3 and then predominantly CSEO3 based systems. So, 1, 2, 3. And apart from the titanium oxide, cellulose, and calcium carbonate, we can also add uh, the alloying elements. For example, if you want to increase the manganese concentration. So, we can also add ferromanganese and if you want to add chromium, you can also add chromium, ferrochromium and those are all added in the flux com uh, the compositions and we also need some uh, binders okay, so to keep to uh, the powders intact and then when, when you bake it, so binder evaporates. So, you also have some binders added to that, generally those are all silicates. Okay, and uh, silicates binders are commonly used uh, for uh, so the, the to making um, to make uh, the flux coating onto the, uh, the electrode. Right, so these are three major types: rutile based, cellulose based, and the calcium carbonate based. So, mm. so, what is the difference between rutile based and cellulosic based in terms of application? So, cellulosic based electrodes are very cheap. Okay. So, in terms of applications, the cellulose based, based electrodes are used for very low end uh, production applications because the, the electrodes we do not need to add uh, titanium oxide or calcium carbonate. So, these are very simple uh, wood materials, cellulose based electrode materials, and these are very cheap okay. so for uh, very common applications like you know repair applications or, uh, or large volume or low end applications, uh, cellulose based electrodes can be used. Okay. Uh, for a, uh, high end engineering applications, generally rutile based electrodes are used. Okay. So, anyway, so rutile based electrodes also contain some amount of cellulose to generate because when you have only rutile, I mean uh, the uh, you can get maximum about 40 percent of hydrogen in the shielding. So, the, the if you have 100 percent shielding, if you have rutile, so the maximum contribution from the rutile is only 40 percent. So, remaining 60 percent should come from burning of cellulose, right? it is clear. 
So, cellulose burns and then gives carbon monoxide and carbon dioxide, rotile gives hydrogen, right? It is clear. So, in cellulose material, so ma the, the majority of uh, the shielding gas is generated by burning cellulose, which would be carbon monoxide and carbon dioxide, right? So, when you burn, uh, I do not know, I mean, how many of you had uh, in your younger days, uh, your mother cooking in, in a wood stove? So, the smoke you generate sometimes suffocating, is not it? Because of increased concentration of carbon monoxide. So, when you burn wood, okay. So, this similar reaction also takes place when the cellulose based material is burnt in the electrode, you generate carbon monoxide and carbon dioxide, okay. So, that is the shielding gas. So, in if you use a carbon dioxide cylinder, obviously carbon dioxide would disintegrate first, dissociate first into carbon monoxide and oxygen atom, right. The same shielding gas can be generated by burning cellulose based material, right, it is clear. So, and then uh, for a, a low nitrogen application, so where you do not need to generate hydrogen, uh, you need to avoid the hydrogen diffusion, the basic flux coated electrodes are commonly used. These electrodes are ca calcium carbonate containing, so this calcium carbonate burns and produce calcium oxide and carbon dioxide, yes, it is clear. So, what are the fluxes uh, we use? And uh, apart from the shielding gas generation, the fluxes also have a varying other roles, right. For example, these fluxes also do the deoxidation of the, the well metal, say in steel making. So, when you want to do deoxidization, okay, so you, what do you do? Aluminium. Yeah, so you add aluminium, so aluminium killing they call it, so killed, aluminium killed, so, so that you can take the oxygen concentration out from the liquid pool. So, these fluxes would also contain deoxidizers, so, typically aluminum, okay. So, aluminum when you add, aluminum burns with the oxygen and forms aluminum oxide, right. So, these fluxes would also contain some amount of aluminum for deoxidization and you can also do desulphurization, okay, and also denitration, denitriding, okay, Nitrif denitrifying, so what they call it. So, varying amount of uh, these elements can also be added to achieve a required well metal property. Right, it is clear. And uh, some amount of following elements you can anyway add by adding, say, uh, ferrolyes um, or ferro, uh, uh, even elemental alloys can also be added if uh, the recovery is very high, but it is depending on the nature of the element. For example, you cannot add al elemental aluminum because aluminum will oxidize. So, the recovery of uh, aluminum in the base in the well pool it is almost very, very low. So, you cannot alloy the well metal with aluminum from the flux or from the electrode, you always lose the aluminum, okay. So, we can try adding boron, ferro boron can be added, so boron would recover in the well pool. So, similar alloying elements you can add, manganese, chromium, silicon, ferro silicon you can add, or ferro titanium, ferro niobium and these elements are commonly added in the well pool to improve the well metal properties because when you add titanium, niobium, vanadium and they are all micro alloying additions, they can cause precipitates to increase the well metal toughness. So, you can play around the flux compositions to achieve the required well metal properties as well, yes, it is clear. So, these are the roles of the fluxes. So, we will see in this class, so how the, the, the uh, these things and you know the role of fluxes in detail in both uh, in uh, SMAW and FCAW and we will also look at uh, the videos when these fluxes burn, how the metal transfer takes place right the process okay good so this is clear right so what we use uh, uh, in the electrodes in smaw so we have the metal core and then the flux coating on the top and this is the electrode what i have in my hand it is a basic flux electrode so what is basic flux electrode means calcium carbonate based and if i use this electrode right away after this class to welding so, I would definitely get on a cold cracking, okay. So, it is already in, uh, in a very humid environment unless I bake it to remove the hyd hydrogen or remove the moisture and if you weld it straight away and then I may end up getting cold cracks. So, the basic flux water electrode should always be baked to avoid the hydrogen embrittlement, okay. So, if I have an a rotel based electrode, Right, so now I no need to bake extensively. 
simple baking because you need to reduce the moisture otherwise you, the hydrogen gas generation will be higher. So, then the project the, the sealing gas naturally will be different that means that arc characteristics will also be different. So, say small baking say 100 degrees for some time. So, then I can start welding because titanium oxide will take care of the moisture. The titanium oxide would uh, dis, uh, dissociate water into hydrogen and then hydrogen can be used for shielding. Okay. Same goes cellulose electrode as well, cellulose electrode okay, you do not need to bake because cellulose electrode can also contains some amount of titanium oxide and when it burns it generates carbon monoxide, carbon dioxide okay. and then titanium oxide can generate some uh, hydrogen, right, it is clear. Okay. So, the we also looked at in last class the major disadvantage of this process is the electrode is not continuous, it has a defined length is not it. So, the automation is difficult or if you want to deposit continuously, so you need to make the electrode sort of an, a, a long lengthy electrode like you make it in GMAW uh, like in a roll, okay, right. So, so in order to do that and also in order to efficiently produce the electrode, so we can also convert the, uh, the geometry of the electrode and we just reverse the role, uh, uh, reverse the position of the flux and the electrode and then we also make the electrode by keeping the flux inside and the metal outside. Okay. So, that is what known as the flux code electrodes, so which are something like this. Okay. So, this can be made into flexible. So, now the flux goes inside, okay. so metal sheet is outside. So, now we can make such electrodes and we can make it as long as possible and we can roll it and then we can feed continuously. Again the, the chemistry of the flux and, the, uh, and the, the, uh, the sealing gas generation from the flux is the same as an SMAW. You also have a three types of electrodes, okay, basic, rutile and cellulosic electrodes, all right. But the difference is here, the flux is inside, the metal sheet is outside, so it is, can be made into flexible. If I, if I bend that, it will break and the, all the flux will go away because flux is very brittle. In this case, the flux is very loosely packed and even if it is, yeah, you bend it, the, yeah, the flux remains inside, right. Now, we can make this process continuous, right. So, the process is the same. So, you, you have an, an, a flux code electrode coming in, okay, and then the, the flux insides again the disintegrates based on the nature of uh, the, the chemical composition of the fluxes, you may either have a CO2 generation or CO2 carbon monoxide generation or carbon dioxide, carbon monoxide, hydrogen generation, right, it is clear. So, okay. so then uh, this flux again burns, it forms slag and the deposits on the top and then you can take it off, so when you need. The other process characteristic are similar to GMAW. Right. So, only thing is here the melting rate can be different, melting rate will be different than the GMAW because some amount of heat is also lost by the flux, flux take away some heat, right. So, the flux also takes some heat, so the melting rate compared to GMAW in this case is slightly lower, but then most of the cases we will be using larger diameter filler, okay. so you also generate more volume. Right, it's clear. Good.